Hey, you're watching Back of the Room with comedian Matthew Gill for Punchline Magazine. We're here at the world famous comedy store on Sunset in Los Angeles with the one, the only, Mr. Nick Swartzen. The guy loves stand up comedy so much, on his day off from shooting a movie, he comes out and comes in to talk to Punchline Magazine. So, yes. Nick, thank you very much. How are you feeling? Of feel? course. I'm feeling very good. I feel refreshed. You feel refreshed? Yeah. How did stand-up come into your life? Where did... My improv company kind of folded for a little bit, and then uh, I was like, I'll just try stand-up. You just it, try it? Like... Literally, it was like, there was an open mic downtown. You got three minutes. You were guaranteed to get on stage, but it was your first time. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I, I, I wrote up kind of a semblance of an act, and then just tried it. Now the truth, right? Mm -hmm. the, what, what happened that night? It went like amazing. I swear to God. Really? I swear to God. The next two times after that, you bombed. Maybe no, I did. Well, the thing about like when I first started was it was really like, hold on to your self-esteem, guys. He's gonna he bombs eventually. No, I know. I know. I, I, I just trust me. It went great, but it was like I was really physical. I did like a lot of characters. I did an impression of my cat throwing up. <laughs> I did it was, like really like That's a lot close. of buzzes and whistles. And Minnesota, it's like, it's really hard to bomb in Minnesota because the crowds are really nice. Yeah, yeah. How long did you do open mics for there? I mean, like, how, how long was that whole beginning process? And, and did, did it, Everything did, was, went very fast. Yeah? I, like, I'm very, like, an addictive personality, like, really <laughs> bad. So I became hooked on stand-up and, like, immediately focused really hard on it. Like, I worked on my act immediately, got up, kept getting up, and just, like, just became, like, voracious, just watch as much stand-up as I could, just became a complete student of it, yeah. insanely. And then like a couple months later, like literally the club made me a house MC. Months? Yeah, okay. it was probably probably three months in. When you were house MCing, how, how often did the material recycle into getting better? Or how long were you doing that? I had, a really, I had really good people that gave me good advice early on, which I was really fortunate to have. And if I can give any advice to a young comedian, yeah. It's just write as much as you can. Like, whatever you do, don't get complacent in, like, your 10 minutes. I would do 10 minutes, and, like, it would crush, you know, when I got into the flow of it. And the owner of the club, I remember, would be like, wow, well, that was great. Now, just, now, now, now do another 10. Uh, and I was like, what? And they were like, write another 10 that works. And yeah. I was like, but I just did 10. And they were like, <laughs> I don't care. Like, now do another one. I was just like, so it was soon. And then they wouldn't give me stage time unless I did. That was another really? thing, too. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people just got stuck in very provincial you know, like stuff that would just kill, but it would, it would kill for like Minnesota. I mean, they would reference like restaurants and stuff, and it's like, well, I want to go to fucking Louisiana. I want to yeah. go to San Francisco. I want to go to Seattle. Yeah. I want my, you know, my jokes to transcend. Like, hey, you know that drugstore down the street? Yeah. I mean, they're, what's with their pharmacist? It's yeah. Like, Great. Do that in fucking Broadway in New York. Yeah. It's like, Get slapped. You know, when you do stand up, which I did, like you have to commit your life 110%. A lot of people ask me how to get started, and it's like, well, commit your fucking life 110%. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. be ready to drop anything for a gig. Be ready to, you know, I don't recommend being in a relationship. I don't recommend, you know, it's just really hard. You got to really, like, put yourself out there. I mean, I slept in my car. I slept in parks. I brushed my teeth in bathrooms. I drove across the country by myself. I fucking lost my mind. I remember driving through deserts and shit for 10 hours to get to gigs. I mean, it was really like a shit show, you know? Yeah. And you ha you have to like be ready to do that stuff, you know? What was that tipping point for you then? Like in, in, in... I mean, I, I got this thing called the Aspen Comedy Festival. Oh, the HBO one? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I got that after doing it six months. Six months? Yeah. Shut the cameras off, man. I'm going back to Chicago. <laughs> yeah, it was. Six months. Six you're, like months. A, you're like Mozart. You know, I mean, you're like, not, I mean, six months, that's fantastic. I mean, we, it we, was insane. I really didn't know what I was getting into. Yeah. But it, yeah, I got a lot of stuff thrown at me right away. Like managers calling my house. And really? Like, you were like a kid going to Duke. You yeah. know, you got like coaches yeah. calling you. Yeah. What yeah. you want, Nick? Literally, it was, was kind of, it was kind of similar in that, but it was just so funny because my mom's like, <laughs> I'm like, it's uh, blah, blah from, you know, CAA. He represents. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Rock or whatever. I was like, really? You know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I wasn't ready for that aspect of it. I, I yeah. went to Aspen and I was just, I was a total starstruck. It was funny because my manager goes, uh, 
he goes, all right, so what What do you want to do? You know, let's like, what, what's the show? <laughs> what do you want to do? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I just want to do stand-up. I want to do more stand-up and build my act. And he was like, okay, don't say that again. It's like, don't, that. <laughs> don't tell anybody that. If you ask, you tell me you want a fucking sitcom. Like, um, so I check my voicemail every day, but I don't have any messages from Adam Sandler. Right. Um, you know, so here's, here's another thing that'll make you uh, hold your breath until you pass out. Can you tell us a little bit? He saw, he saw my half hour doing Comedy Central. And uh, he wrote my name down, and you know he came into his office and was like, "Do you know this young comic?" And they're like, "Yes." But it was, you know, the thing about my relationship with Adam, and a lot of people don't really understand, is like, he, he didn't hand me anything. Yeah. Like he gave me an opportunity. You know, working with Adam it was just like everything. You know, he would give me something, and I, you know, I, I worked really hard for it. What's the most frustrating part about show business for you? The only thing that's frustrating. I mean, this is stupid, but the only thing that I can think of that. It's hard. It's, it's, I, I mean, I party really hard. I party a lot. <laughs> but I, it's hard because I, I have, a, like, a ton of responsibility, especially now. Like, yeah. it builds. So there's a lot of times where I have to go, like, really cold turkey and, like, sober up and, like, not drink. And it's like, you know, I really can't drink when I work. And, like, I'll, I'll go out and people will get, like, super pissed. Like, be like, <laughs> hey, man, I love your shit. Can I buy you a shot? I'm like, no, I'm actually, like, I'm not, I'm not drinking right now. And they're like, yeah, fuck that. You know, let's do a Jaeger bomb. And I'm like... No, like, I gotta get up tomorrow. And they're like, just show up drunk, man. I'm like, yeah, no, I, I can't do that. <laughs> yeah. no, like, so have you ever had a period in your life? This is kind of... Never had a period. Never had a period? <laughs> Damn. Um, where your new stuff was kind of, like, bombing a little bit, and you kind of question yourself? I'm trying to do a completely new hour. I threw everything away, and I'm trying to start from scratch. So I'm kind of experiencing that right now with writing jokes and kind of going... You know, just because people like always want new material. Yeah. And I'm not somebody who will tour with the same stuff I've done. Yeah. I just won't do that to my fans and I won't do that with myself. I can't physically do that. I just can't tell the same shit over and over again. It's scary, but it's like just fucking do it. Like at the end of the day, it's like and especially in the early years, like you've gotta cut your teeth. You've gotta accept that you're gonna bomb. Yeah. Just know that it will happen. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I hate shit, dude. I moved to New York and I had to really cut my teeth. It was scary dude it's like New York it's like you can eat shit really quick yeah <laughs> you know what I mean? like, the East Coast they don't have a lot of patience for you if you're not if you're not funny pretty quickly like yeah they can get restless and I mean which is also makes it exciting because yeah you know you can lose them at any time you know what I mean and you can get them back but it's like stand up I mean those guys are serious dude those comics are like they know what the fuck they're doing they've been in the trenches and it's like they've worked you know, and you can't be afraid of silences either. Like, you know, when you get times in between jokes. Like, you know, Dana Gould was one of my mentors, who's brilliant. If you don't know him, just get his old stand-up and his, get anything he does. He's a Simpsons producer. He's a genius. But he always said, the audience wants to like you. Like, they go yeah. to a show, like, for the most part, they want to like you. They just want you to like them. It's not about pandering and, yeah. like, making them. It's just about being comfortable with who you are, yeah. then they'll be comfortable with you. Yeah. Last and final performance, best performance, what comedians are in the back of the room, dead or alive, that you'd like to have them see and see your show? Your Nobody. Your, nobody? <laughs> no, because they're all, I'm intimidated by comics. Like, I watch guys like Dan Tosh and Bill Burr and Pat, and I'm just like, oh boy. I'm like, this is so much funnier than anything <laughs> I can do. And like, I got this new show coming out called Pretend Time with Nick Swartz, and it comes out in the fall. It's a sketch show. Ooh, what's it going to air on? Comedy Central. Comedy Central, okay. In okay. the fall, like October. Okay. See you later, bro. What are you doing? <laughs> you Paulie Shore has joined us. Uh, here I need the... my rent check. <laughs> I need my rent check. I have to pay comedy rent, so. Right, no, I'm just kidding. But for the record, this is something too. Uh, when I first started stand-up, one of the first, the two first albums I owned was Stephen Wright, I Have a Pony, and Pauly Shore is the Future of America. Nice. Many is, years ago. Which is amazing. It's a great, it's a great, great album, dude. So this is for Born to Be a Star? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, a great, so funny good. movie. Yeah, so well. Uh, Pauly's in it. He, he plays himself. Yeah. Play yourself. I play the, um... It's funny because I always wanted to host the Porno Academy Awards, but I actually <laughs> never wanted to host the Porno Academy Awards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so I guess Definitely. I'm in a row. Cool, man. Right. Thanks for stopping Later. by. Well, they travel safe. Can you tell us a little bit more about the film? To me, it wasn't like 
I got a movie, let's get fucking hammered. It's like, <laughs> I got a movie, I gotta make this the fucking Good. best thing I can be. Yeah. It's called Born to be a Star, Labor Day weekend. Uh, myself, Don Johnson, Christina Ricci, Steven Dorf, Kevin Nealon. Um, it was an idea that Adam Sandler had, and it was about a, a kid who finds out his parents used to be porn stars back in the 70s. So he decides that's his calling. And uh, he moves to L.A. and it's just this fish out of water. It's, it's literally, I describe it as Napoleon Dynamite meets Boogie Nights. Uh, the movie I'm shooting now is called Just Go With It. It's me and Sandler and Jennifer Aniston and Nicole Kidman and it comes out. <laughs> Jesus <It> Christ! Comes... <laughs> what are you doing? I don't know. Man. I'm just saying it comes out next week. He he's on time to a Punchline magazine. He's shooting a movie with Nicole Kidman for crying out loud. Adam Sandler, Jennifer Aniston. It comes out next Valentine's comes Day. Out next but it's Valentine's really great. Day. We're in the middle of shooting it now, and it's it's honestly like I'm really, really excited. It's genuinely really, really funny and awesome. This is Matthew Guilford back of the room, uh, Punchline Magazine. This is Nick Swartz, and he is the same man in real life as you will see on screen. He is a very good dude. Uh, he's got some big time movies coming out. He's always going to be bringing it with, uh, with a new comedy special um, all the time. He's working on some great projects. Go to nickswartzen.com, sign up. And uh, thank you so much for coming in, man. Yeah, of course, Appreciate buddy. You. Go Vikings. Anytime. Bye, guys. If you're a comic out there, good luck, dude. It's a lot of work, but just be yourself.